I remember in, in preparing for our discussion, uh, we were talking about, okay, hiring and onboarding. So who do you let in? Right, who do you let in? Do you let in those that think like you or do you let those in with new or contrary voices? And Megan says, well, what about the ones that you already have? So what did you do with those that were already in? And what do you do with them to make sure that you get the most of them? You have to get to know them, truly get to know them so that you can make the assessment. Um, there will be groups that just don't make it. Um, and then there's a vast majority though that can, uh, but what they need to be able to make that change, make that transition. Some of them are in different stages of understanding who they're, who they are. And if they don't know who they are, like you've got to help them with that. And that's a different skill set. That's a different leader capability. And then there are others that are like right there with you. But I did also discover for those that are right with you in the change, as you make the transformation, they need to keep changing. And that was one of the things I um, underestimated. So I'm in about year three of the role I'm in. And some of my most ardent supporters now need to make transformations themselves. And so who were, you know, rock stars, however you want to define that as an employee, um, now have things that they have to work on. And so I think that's been a bit humbling for them and a learning experience for me. We need to stop assuming who belongs where, doing what and how. Thank you for that wisdom. Okay, Paul, talk about hiring and onboarding. So what guidelines can you create to make sure opportunities for jobs or promotions are open to people with more diverse experience, education, and qualifications beyond the obvious ones that we've always considered? What well, great question, Glenn, and uh, good to be here with my friends uh, overall, and everyone else. Hey, so um, I, I really want to go back a little bit in my career uh, as I thought about you know when I got to my first team, um, I was an individual contributor. And then uh, with my company I was working with, Digital Light Company at the time, um, I moved into a role where I was actually managing a team and I inherited um, part of the team. So I had 12 people and um, six were there. And so what I always like to look at is that those that are there, how can I add that? How can I let them see their value and then also use their skills to help upskill the others that come in? So as we're coming in, we've got to always look at the value of the people that you have. And also you want to make sure that that shared value that you have with your team members is now being transferred over to your new team members. And then the other thing is that, you know, is that, you know, the trust is that, you know, I gave them the, the, the leeway, if they will, to make decisions. Here's what we have to always remember is that we are each other's customer. That's the first thing. If we realize that each of us in those apartments, we are each other's customer. Love it. So let's talk again. Let's go back to hiring and onboarding. Uh, well, what barriers must be removed to ensure that the organization doesn't limit itself from hiring the best talent? I love that question. We always want to hire the PhDs. We always think about performance, KPIs, but we never put talk about trust. And as a team, as a team member, right? Who do we let in? We value the, actually, we always want the high trust, high performance. Yes. We never want the low trust, low performance. But we would rather take the person that is medium performance, high trust, because we know that they will deliver. You have to look at the whole person concept when we look at people's resumes. It's not about when we were talking about earlier in terms of uh, credentials. Right? We're actually moving towards certifications and skill base. And that's where, who do we let in, in terms of finding them as a whole person, rather than just finding the best. Think about that. I mean, do you know what you solve for as an individual? Or do you just know what your responsibilities are at work? 